Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted. I am Maury Curtis Dunbar, the maker of messes at Painted Studio. <laughs> All right, so yesterday we did a bunch of work on planters, like this one. And today we're gonna start foiling them and we're going to apply the plasters and stuff that create great textures and then we'll foil over that. Um, but I think first we're going to start, sorry, I've got a little notification that needs to go away. We're gonna start with our square one first, this one. We're gonna foil it and we're gonna go 4th of July because what's coming up very, very, very soon, 4th of July. All right, I'm gonna move the camera so you can see where we're at. And hopefully I can keep that in a good shot there. There we go. And I'm gonna pull out our red, white, and blue stripe foil first. And I think, I'm thinking maybe around the top we do the red. I think that would look really sharp. So we'll start with the red, I think, because then I can flip the bucket upside down once I've done the red foil to get at the stripes, which will make my life a little easier. So. And as always, if uh, you have a question, do not hesitate to ask it. If I miss it while we're doing the lives, I go back and I write it all down. Um, or I write the answers down, I answer everybody's questions, so nothing gets forgotten. Um, I just can't always see because I'm, you know, here working on the project so that that gets done. Okay, this is our red glitter stars foil, and I'm foiling inside the container too. Let's see if you can see that inside the container down in here. Um, because, why? Because it's a surface, it's got paint, and then it had a foil adhesive. Now this foil adhesive has been curing dry without the aid of any heat for a couple hours now. Oh, that released really well. And I know that I'm going to have a flawed release because foils are very far from perfect, but you can get really, really close. I mean, look how nicely that red is releasing there. That looks really sharp. That's really, really nice. All right, so I'm gonna do around the corner here. And I think we're just gonna take a little more here and get a little scrubby. And if I don't like how a spot has released, I can always come back and apply more foil adhesive and release more. That is always an option. I kind of like the broken look. It's, um, it works for me. And then usually I just rub glitter over everything and fill in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know that's not a lie. <laughs> you know, I really actually do that all the time. So I'm getting in here, foiling the inside. Um, I applied adhesive as far down as I put the black paint. I put the black paint down further than I expected it to be easily seen. Um, so that the whole bucket looks complete. But I'm not gonna go all the way down in here because once moisture starts getting in against this, um, I'm likely to have lifting. So really, I don't expect the inside to hold up as well as the outside because this will have an exterior rated top coat on it even though the products that we're using are interior rated. We're gonna, again, this is my summer for testing how things hold up, so. That's what we're going to find out. How is, how is this going to hold up on a planter? Now the table I had that I did in the green tie-dye foil that everybody likes so much, the one that um, has all the really uh, cute patterns on it and the gold leaf feather for the knob. 
that's been outside and there are issues um, because I didn't give everything 45, you know, 30 days to cure like water-based products need. Um, I'm already having some lifting. So I know that that's where a problem is. If I had really wanted that to be a good, stable outdoor piece, I would have left it alone and let it cure. <laughs> I should have I should have done it in March, <laughs> pretty much. But that's okay. That's what how we learn about things. Right. Get this back up over here. Get around the edges. Yeah, I didn't get this part very well. A little toothbrush. Okay. Let's see. Well, I see which brush is releasing this better for me on this surface. The surface has got a little texture. And it's actually this brush does it better but if I scrub too much I get dull spots so I have to really be aware of how I'm applying whereas if I don't have to scrub a lot the stars on this pop really really nicely flaws in the application are completely on me, not on the products. Foil releases beautifully. The foil adhesive applies spectacularly. Me, however, I'm human. I make mistakes. I don't always get my coverage perfect. I miss spots. I skip spots. I apply too thin or too thick. Like right there, I think I probably applied a little thick and it wanted to peel back. Nope, actually, there's a little adhesive there and it's just going on. I thought I peeled it back, I was wrong. Okay. Let's do this one and I need to get another piece to get inside here because I haven't gotten all my corners or anything else right now. And this is this is a good spot to show you because this is I, I think I got my uh, set coat below the line where I'd put prime etch. So if you look in there, you can see I pulled paint off of a spot and it stuck to the foil. So you have to be aware of that. You really want to make sure that you don't get the wrong side of the foil stuck on something like this that's plasticky because it'll want to peel it back really quickly. So you have to really be aware of how you're applying stuff. Um, I may have pulled back a few spots doing this, but that's okay. All the better for learning. Put this over here. Roll it down, push it in. Scrubber, a softer scrubber. Let's see, 
That pulls nothing off except the foil, which is supposed to come off. inside here because now I can set this on an edge because it's got the raised lip so it's not putting all that adhesive flat down on a surface. It won't hurt it. Well, as soon as I finish releasing this and I turn it over I'll look up and see what everybody's questions are. Oh yeah, I see you can do that. You can peel that right off and that happens inside planters that are plastic because I broke through the seal that I had worked so hard to build. So that means in a little while, I'm gonna put a little Primatch right there. Then I'll do the, all the layers over again and I'll fix it. You know, not everything's the best surface for this, but heck, I got these free. So if they only last the summer, I don't mind, but once it's all cured up, it will actually last much longer than you realize. Right, let's get in here, and I'm just getting inside in the corners where there's been no foil release, and filling in the blanks basically, putting all my extra scraps. And I'm sure if you've never ordered from us before, just so you know, oftentimes you will receive scraps from projects that we do here in the studio. Um, they make It makes excellent packing material when you order, and also it might introduce you to a color and foil that you've never had before. We just had a gal who I swear had could not be missing any foil colors and I sent her a scrap of something that I had used that week on another project and immediately she called and said, "I, how did I not know you had this? I'm ordering it now. <laughs> so it's always fun to see what it is. Plus it's a matter for us, it's also a matter of recycling and making as much use out of um, whatever we have here as possible try to reduce the amount of trash that we create. There we go. Okay, so, and again, like I said, you, there is this big torn spot right here that I'm going to have to deal with later. Hey, Rachel. Hey, you're nice to see you. Gosh, it's also nice to see people here. All right, so I finished with those foils. And let me move this out of the way because now all those foils are going to want to stick to stuff. So I just I throw them on the floor. I'll pick them up later. My foil sticking to itself. All right. Um, and then now I can turn it this way. And we're going to use our red, white, and blue, or red, silver, and blue stripes. Um, We've got our 4th of July coming up for our friends in Europe. They have assorted independence, Bastille, all sorts of stuff coming up. So I love doing a red, white, and blue or a red, silver, and blue theme. Okay. So I'm gonna apply this here. And I'm lucky. Oh, it's perfectly fits the width with the exception of about a quarter of an inch over here. So that's going to make my life much easier. All right, so first I'm smoothing this with my hands. Um, and sometimes you can get a little air bubble going under here and then you shift it around with your hand like this. You hear that crackling? And what that does is it, there's a little bubble under there and then you rub it with your hand and it releases the foil nearly flawlessly. So if you get that, you embrace it and work it. Okay, now 
now the next thing we're gonna do is take And if you've never used foils before, do not scrub in circles on a large surface like this because you will actually create scrubbed circles into your release pattern. Verticals and horizontals give you a much cleaner release. Oh yeah, that's coming up nicely. Look at that. Oh, how cool is that? I like that. And it's very imperfect, but I really like that. Look how sharp that looks. All right, let me get this last spot here that I missed right up under there. And all I have to do is just match my stripes up. It's not that hard. Okay, and get up under there. Where's my toothbrush? Somehow I missed under there, and if nothing releases, it means that I missed it with the foil adhesive too, which isn't unheard of. Yeah, I kind of missed the foil adhesive up here, so I'm probably going to have to go back in there. Oh, well. Another, another day, another stripe. Okay, I've got problems right here. I pulled foil off when I had a piece of foil with the red foil I was working on stuck here. It ripped that. I will fix that later because I'm not going to try to patch it now while you all are watching me. But really well, what it'll be is a little more prime etch, a little black set coat, then some foil adhesive, and I'll release some foils right over it. I'll match the stripes because these are easy stripes to match since they're good and wide. All right, let's see if I can get this applied on the spot as nicely as I did before on the other side. And again, nearly perfect fit on here. I've just got like a this little bit here would have been perfect to fit over there. Oh well, I'll figure that one out. I'll just move it and adjust it. Right, let's get this going. Okay, I got nice one of those, another nice one of those little bubbles right there. Yep, and see, you can see I'm actually pulling it right off there because once I broke that seal on it, um, yeah, I, I made my own life challenging. So I'm going to pull that off like that. It, it, it did release nicely on the paint. <laughs> oh, God. I entertained myself. At least I entertained somebody. Okay. So this is, I'm going to take it again up on its side because I do have some miss spots right there. And all I do is match the stripes up, which isn't that hard to do uh, since we've already got a broken release in here and I can see where they belong. All right, where did my brush go? There we go. does nicely there and again this mess here is completely because I caught it at a tender moment where the paint hadn't cured where the prime etch needed probably might have used it better with another day on it prime etch is normally perfect in 24 hours but I put a lot of stuff on in a short amount of time that, and we're doing it on plastic the hardest surface I could possibly choose to do something like this on Oh well, no big deal. It's fixable. That's that piece going down there.
So you all know we are indeed open for business so I can have people walk in it's happened before although usually my local people know that I do lives around this time of day they've seen the sign on the door for <laughs> a year and a half now like how that comes out. I just think that looks so good. And then we got our one last side to do on this one and we'll go work on a different one which is going to be a completely different look than this one is. to get the stripes on pretty straight which is amazing considering I hung two racks for foils at such an angle you would have thought I was drunk when I hung them. And not, not impressed with me for that one. I mean, just how fun is that? Even if it's just for the 4th of July and the only thing that it does is hold ice and beers. What a fun project. Now I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to correct all the, the oopses on that later and then I'll post pictures of it completed and it will be top coated for protection. This one is the round one we did. Now this is a little heavier. This is not quite as thin a, a plastic as the other one was. Put this back over here. Put a little tape on my, oh, there's my tape from this roll. That's not my tape from that roll. It says pewter on it. This is not pewter. All right, put that back over there and we're going to grab our blue pebble foil oh thank you Rachel yeah, they are looking so cute and again there are challenges and flaws on painting on plastic that one that I did is probably the one that will be the most likely to be like damaged problematically damaged because it's very thin plastic that's very flexible and that's the kind of stuff that can be really hard when you want to paint and foil it. The more rigid ones tend to be um, more sustainable. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna wrap it around the top, roll it down, and try not to have the rest of it stick to the rest of the container. And I got my little toothbrush go in and scrub. I'm sorry if you're getting the back of my shoulder or my head. 
I have to remember to move out of my own way so you all can see what I'm doing. See, if I don't have a camera here in front of me, I have to keep peeking over my shoulder to make sure I'm not making it hard for the rest of you. Oh, wow, that's looking great. And look how nice that blue pebble looks on there. Let me pick it up so you can see. Look how good that looks on that. That's really good. So I'm gonna cut these in a couple strips because that will make it easier and then I will get to the inside afterwards. Um, since this isn't square, it doesn't just fold over nice and neatly and it's more likely to get stuck on the wrong spots. So I'm trying to prevent that. And as you can notice, my table is a Lazy Susan. This is an Ikea coffee table um, that I happened to like pick up on the side of the road a couple years ago. I actually thought this was like a kid's play table because that's what it had been being used for. And um, scrubbed all the old crayon marks off of it, took the base apart, added a Lazy Susan turntable to it, which cost me like eight dollars max at Home Depot and I made myself a big furniture lazy Susan because it's way kinder on my body than having to um, spin the furniture put it on lift it up and put it on movers wheels and then adjust the wheels all the time this works way better for me and because I didn't pay for the table the whole thing cost me about eight dollars a couple hours of labor Um, and I share this information because people ask me almost every time they see it. So yes, the table is still available at Ikea. It's like $99, so you can find one that's free, like I did. It's a better deal, but um, you can still make yourself a, a big furniture lazy season for around $100. First, wait for the big Ikea summer sale or something like that. Do it then if you can't find one like I did. this lockdown stuff I've watched a lot of movies and some of them have been wonderful and some of them have just been really bad so I watched finally got a chance to watch Harriet Tubman which was fabulous and then I watched the new Charlie's Angel movie with um, first uh, Kristen Stewart Kirsten Stewart um, yeah, that one wasn't, that one wasn't good. I was not impressed with that one. <laughs> there were a lot of good cameos in it, though. I did get a kick out of that. All right. We are getting around the top really well. And I do keep an eye on the clock because I know... I don't want to bore you in two hours worth of foiling and stuff. I'm going to make sure you enjoy what I'm doing. So keep an eye on the clock not to put you all in a coma for hours and hours and hours. I really like how this is coming out. This is going to be so nice. I had missed it with adhesive too, <laughs> but I didn't just miss it with the foil. This should be the last little bit that needs to go on here. On this rim, and then I'll get the inside. I do a lot of um, pieced foiling like this. And what I mean by piece foiling is, like, I pick different colors, I place them in different places, I kind of piece together a finish um, out of a 
a bunch of different ideas. I like that. I like to be able to have a lot of stuff happening, get creative with it, as opposed to just sort of going monochromatic. That's not really me. Well, if you've watched some of my videos, you you know that I can go very bright in my colors. That um, allium, the purple allium and the disco gold background, wow, that's over, well, it was over on the wall until I hung the new foil racks, but man, that's a pretty intensely colored piece. So, yeah, I don't tend to shy away from color. Okay, this is nice. And I'm not having any pullback issues on this, A, because it's not flexible, B, because the surface is more receptive to it. Let's see how much more am I going to need. Um, and I'm just cutting off the strips as I need them. I don't want to cut more than I'm going to use. But I definitely, you know, like the last one, I definitely want to get down inside so that wherever the level is that the plant or the tree pot or whatever it is I choose that I put in here, um, you don't see the original finish. I want this finish to go below that. There's not much left to foil out on here. releasing so nicely. I'm just sort of rubbing it with my fingers. I love when I get released. It's that juicy. Makes me happy. So I know it's hot everywhere in the country except right here right now. And I'm just saying a, a grateful thank you that it's been comfortable and in the, the low 70s for the last couple days because I know it's going to get hot by the end of this week. I know some of you all have been in incredible heat waves. My, my sympathies to you. So now we can turn this over and I can get the foil on the bottom edge of the lip here. And I have to go a little carefully on that because there's foil and pieces everywhere. And where's my toothbrush? There it is, underneath everything, of course. So I'm now working down here, just releasing under the the rim. And I have to go carefully because I don't want it released up here. I have a different foil that I'm using there. So I just need to sort of piece this in a little bit. best movie that you've discovered while um, doing all this lockdown stuff. Something that you might never have watched any other time, but because you found the time to watch it, what did you see that was amazing? Because I am always open to new ideas. This is very quick. That's okay. I don't mind taking my time to get it to come out the, the way I want it to. I, I started to say the right way, but it's not necessarily the right way. It's the right way for what I want.
try to use up as much as I can on these pieces. Just to keep waste down. And again, nothing's ever really wasted because what I don't use goes in packages to others. It goes right into our packing scrap bag. If you're a person who doesn't want to get foil scraps, there's a place to put in the uh, notes when you order. And you can say, please, no foil scraps. I got enough of that. Or if you really want foil scraps, please feel free to stick a note in there saying, please give me foil scraps. I really like getting them. So you can opt in, you can opt out, or you can just take what I send you. acquired a new skill on lockdown or on when you know when everything's been closed I know we're opening back up so this is going to become less and less of a question as things start hopefully returning to a healthy normal um, but, you know everybody kind of did some new things so for me it was I got really good at doing my nails and um, a few other skills that I learned. <laughs> I learned how to get my husband to do the housework instead of me. I don't even know how I did that one, but I think that one is a heck of a skill and I should probably, if I could think, remember how I did it, I should pass that one on. Okay, so we got that one all done. Let me get a piece of tape and tape this roll up and then we're going to get the, the base color for it. All right. We're going to use our blue-green tie-dye which is going to look so sharp with the blue pebbles. Maybe I won't lose it this time. Like I've lost all the other ones. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to wrap this a little, but I know when I pull it off, the release is going to be very uneven because we've got ridges and it's conical shape compared to just this straight band that uh, I'm dealing with with the foil. Come on, get on here. I know some people are very concerned about getting their foil on as smooth as possible. Quite frankly, with this pattern, it's not going to matter. The tie-dye is extremely forgiving, so it'll make it really nice and easy to um, repair any bad spots that I might create by not having this on here smoothly. Plus, I just don't believe in stressing myself on stuff like this if I can avoid it. <laughs> I'm sorry, we give ourselves enough stress. I kind of try to embrace what the material is and how it does stuff and, you know, work with it instead of getting frustrated because I didn't get it on perfectly. Oh, wow. That is so sharp. There's a spot that I missed. There's a couple spots I missed. Right in here. 
going to have to turn this right side over and make sure I get the top of these ridges too um, because they're very easy to overlook. Okay. Another piece of foil. And get the rest of this. Sorry, I'm not talking because I'm trying to make sure I don't screw this up. Here, rubbing all over. So if there's any of those bubbles I can release. There we go. Really nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, even right here where there was a lot of crossover, um, you can sort of see a little crinkly pattern here, but it looks so good. It's, there's nothing to complain about with it at all. Let me start patching in the spots that I missed because there's only so many inches of width on this versus what the pot has. Oh, this looks good. Okay, I can flip it over now so I can catch the other angles because um, just changing the direction on something sees. Um, it shows the lighting will pick up, uh, highlight different spots that I thought I had covered and didn't. So like right here, I missed that on the way around. So. And I really didn't even notice it when I had it turned the other way. So now I'm going to come back and make sure this whole spot right here gets spoiled. And the release is just so good between the Artsyville foil adhesive and the quality of the foils. And it's really hard to have a bad release. I know you all can't see the blank spots that I do because the way the camera's angled, but I promise you, they're there. I knew there were some spots down here. And then 
there's a big spot right there. Ooh, there's a big spot right there. Okay, gotta roll these things around. A little more to get up under that. such a nice release. I don't think I even need a scrub brush. Yep, flawless. Nice. And I didn't even expect that quality. You know, I don't, when I say I don't expect that to happen, um, it's never an issue of the adhesive or the paints or anything like that. It's more of I know foils can be flawed in their release, so I'm always just thrilled when I get such a good release that there's so little open space on anything. So look how cool that is. I mean, that's going to look great. That's going to look fantastic. So I'm going to set that one aside. All right. We're going to pull the last planter out, and it is the one that we will not be foiling today. Why? Because we are putting a pattern through plaster on it. All of this out of the way. I did one side earlier today, and it's been sitting in my heating box, which is that big, oops, sorry, my camera slipped, that big black thing right there. It's a hydroponic tent with a heater attached to it so that I can... Um, speed the drying process. All right, let me see if I can get this out here. Let's see how dry it is. We'll know how far we're going in our lives today. Yep, it's good. All right. So, turn this around. Let me put the camera so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so this container, think you can see it. Let's see if we can get this zoomed in so you can see it a little better. Almost. You can sort of see that we've got texture on here. It, the light here is not letting it show well. But I put on a Venetian plaster and you can see the variations in the light and darks on here. But you really aren't seeing the roller pattern, sort of vaguely right here. Um, so I want to create, well, hang on a second, let me zoom back out. All right, so what I'm going to do is turn it on this side now that I've done that side. I'd like to do opposite sides. It works best. Let me angle the camera down so you can see a little better. And what I've done, you saw this on the live that I did day before yesterday um, that I painted this uh, with prime etch first then set coat metallic navy and then I created this sort of dark purpley blue color Venetian gem and now I have to find my trowel All the way over there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this to the surface and I'm going to be generous. Now I added a lot of colorant. This was originally Venetian gem amethyst and I added some black and some custom blue to get it darker. So I got to get it where I can reach it. And there's little chunks in here. There's always little chunks in everything I have. <laughs> it's just the nature of my life. Um, so I'm going to trowel this on. Now, I added a lot of pigment and colorants to this. So if I wanted to try to polish this, 
like a polished plaster, I'd be really disappointed in the way it would come out because when you add too many faux cream colors or too much faux cream color to uh, Venetian gem, it makes it harder to burnish. It doesn't want to polish up so nicely. But fortunately for me, that's not what I'm going for. There's a little chunk right there. Take that out. Let's get this on. Now, when I do the other sides, I will tape this all off. But at the moment, it doesn't. All I need to do is just keep the edge wiped down so I don't have any high buildup. And I will not be doing the plaster on the inside, um, just whatever foil I apply over. in the mood to battle something like that to see if I can get my rollers in there and all of that nonsense because I know I'll screw it up. Plus it's just not necessary. I will have the foil going all the way in so that will continue the look without having to kill myself to get a texture plaster going inside. And I just threw a huge blob of purple plaster on the floor. I'm very proud of myself for that. So I'm gonna roll that on the whole thing. I do this with a lot of surface. So if you've seen the glittery lotus table, I did the same thing with that. Um, crocodile tapes, I love creating a textured surface and then foiling over it because then it adds even more di dimension and shine uh, to the plat, to both the, uh, sorry thinking about not spilling the plaster inside this, so I lost track of my words for a minute. Um, because it gives your uh, foils more dimension to be reflective, so it actually bumps up the shine power of a foil by having a texture underneath it, because it gives it more reflective surfaces for the light to catch. Okay, let's get this over here. Now this should stay nice and wet for a while. Let me go grab my rollers. Uh, I need that actually to dry a little before I roll it because it'll set back. Uh, it'll settle a little bit because this is so liquid because I put so much colorant in it. Um, I know that it could just, um, level out a little bit if I didn't give it a minute to set up. And then I got to turn this my way so that I can get at it. Let's see. I just got to make sure I have enough of the edges to get a imprint through because the edges are where you tend to trowel the thinnest so that does mean paying attention so the edges don't dry before the rest of it does all right so i'm going to take we're using the chrysanthemum roller sorry i got to get it back on because i had it washed this is a chrysanthemum roller always check to make sure your spin is open and free uh, if not, clean the edge of, clean your roller handle and clean your roller core here to make sure uh, that you got everything out of it so it'll spin. All right, and obviously I didn't take any special care not to have the pattern you know that that i wanted the pattern to match perfectly now it's thick so it's popped up on here 
I am not going to go and try to fix that because once this is dry, I can sand it. All right, let me get my fingers here. Give me two seconds to go rinse my hands off because I can't touch anything right now, including the camera to flip it back up. I had to clean off enough plaster from my fingertips to make it so I could do that. <laughs> oh, you, you're just ordering that roller today, the chrysanthemum roller. Whoops, sorry. I thought I had my tripod stable and obviously I didn't. Uh, hi, Rhonda, no, it's not luster stone. It is uh, Venetian gem and amethyst that I added a whole lot of custom blue and black onto to get that sort of deep purpley periwinkle color. Um, I wanted something closer to the metallic navy that I painted, but you could use another dark color. Um, I just only had a few colors in the Venetian gem here in the studio, believe it or not, even with all this product here. Venetian gem, I keep a fairly limited amount of colors in just because I normally use gray, black, brown, beige. Uh, all right, so um, I think we're done for the day. Uh, we've been on here. We've foiled two pots, so you can see that we did our... Let's see. Try to show you the good side, not the one I tore up. We have our Americana pot, our red, white, and blue one, which I think is super fun. We have our super gardeny one, which is just stunning. And then we have this one that we're working on here with the plaster on it. That one, I'm gonna, it's gonna take me a couple days because everything has to dry and then I have to be able to foil over it and finish the, the project that way. But it's all gonna be done and you'll see it all. All right, everybody, have a great afternoon. Thanks for stopping in. Share the love here. Use your sprinkle button, pass us around. We're gonna do a contest in July that's gonna depend on yeah, the sprinkles. So please keep sprinkling. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. Thank you for being here. If I didn't answer your questions, I'm gonna read them. I will type the answers in so they're right there for you to check back on. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.